Right, first of all, good morning to all of you. Today is the 7th of December, 2020. Now today, MAO technical side will be a bit longer because last night, I knew MAO, I did not talk about the technical side. So I'll cross, I'll do a bit more for this morning. All right, it may take about 45 minutes, okay? So let's just start then, okay? Okay, so let me just zoom across the chart right now to my PowerPoint. There we go. Can you see my PowerPoint? If you just give me a thumbs up. Okay, thank you. Okay, so today, 7 December, 2020, Monday. All right, we are entering to our sixth week. Now, what six week later on, I'll explain to you in a weekly chart. But those who, acted, who basically um, joined me last night or the MEO, you understand that, okay? So first of all, before we start this morning, once again, I need you to give me the disclaimer to let, to identify me, all right, for any sharing that I share today. All right, do know once again, I am not a regulated, you know, licensed um, technician, or you know, certified charties, whatever not. Okay, I didn't have all this glory, right? I just have a regular guy who sees market in a very different way, and I've been sharing this since 2000, what as far back as 2016 on trade for trade the boys, uh, in the market for 20 years as a trader, trainer, and stuff like that. Okay, all right. So thank you so much. Do make sure that whatever I share tonight or today, sorry, all right. Make sure that you do consider your current financial condition before you go into that. Okay, right, let's start with this Dow Jones. Now, last Friday, Dow Jones was up by 248 points. You can see pretty clearly. All right, now we know that the US non farm payroll was terrible, very terrible, but apparently it's not right. People see from different angles. All right, some say that because it's terrible, that's why the fiscal policy will be coming up soon and there will be more stimulus coming up. Well, I buy that because I know that it will, because there's no other way, right? The stock market is all the way up because of that. Okay, there's nothing else on that itself. So the thing is this, um, oops, okay. All right, let me just take this out first. All right, so now we are seeing that the US stock futures are up this morning, right? In fact, the Dow was up by 100 points this morning. Now, what is the reason? Well, apparently this is the reason. Apparently some of people say, that, right, from your daily research says that the, the job report wasn't so bad, okay? Because overall there's growth. I mean, this is really, to me, uh, honestly, I'm the, he's a president and chief investment strategy, so I cannot fight him in terms of academic, but to me, it's more of bullshit, all right? Come on, man, be realistic here yourself. The numbers have been down for five months in a row, and you're still telling me that the numbers are okay. Yes, there will be growth, there will be people working, definitely with $3.2 trillion entry market, there will be some jobs available, but it's dwelling down. So seriously, it's only this, the new physical stimulus package that probably Biden and team will come out with is the one that's stimulating the current growth right now. That is my personal opinion, all right? So the thing is this, I want to share this chart with you in particular. This is the put and call ratio in the CBOE. All right, now what should, let, me, let me share you how to understand this better. Okay, so what you see is the blue one. The blue index, okay, it is... Um, the so-called the put call ratio, okay? So put call ratio means that, right, put versus call, okay? So when the put, there's a lot of people buying put, all right, the ratio will go up man, because the higher number. So back then, you remember this in March itself, okay, in March, there is a lot of people buying the put option because the market was going down, right? So a lot of people buy put. That's why the put to call ratio become higher. Now, usually call will be more than put, always the case. So that's why when you hit about 85% was very high number. And when that happened itself, you can see the stock market bottom out in March and the market rally all the way for under now. So that's why whenever you see put ratio is more than 80, it's very good time to look for buying opportunity. Okay, just think of that. So you can see on the downside, this is where the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 has went down, right? Okay, so this is how it works. Okay, now the thing is this, as you can see that if the people, right, start to think that the call option is so important now, everybody buying call because the market is going up, then at this junction here itself, you can see pretty clearly that uh, the market will usually have a so-called blow, blow up top, okay, blow up top. That means that there will be a point whereby there's a reversal candle and then the market sells, okay? So what we're seeing right now, okay, let me change a bit of colors. I think it's not too easy to see. All right, this is the point here. This is where the market eventually uh, bottom up. So what we are seeing right now is that we are seeing the same thing. We have the market now, the 
output call ratio is at the low end. And every time near the low end, okay, the market eventually will have a blowout call. Now, blowout call doesn't mean must sell big time. It can be just a 5, 10%, but that is a lot of money. So if you actually put yourself in that position and then make some money, this could be a very good Christmas for all of us here. So, all right. So everybody clear with this? If you are clear, can you key the word call? C-O-L-L, C-A-L-L, -L, sorry. C-A-L-L call into the group chat, all right? All right, now why please call? Because if you say put, I guess I guess I'm not, you jump in the market and sell big time. Just type put a call first so that you guys know that it's a put versus call. Now, do understand this. It's not an immediate thing. Huh? I repeat that it's not an immediate thing. You can see that the market actually went down several times before the market do a blow up top. So guys, don't do immediate reaction. It will take a while. You need that reaction from the market, which means you need to see the reversal happening before the things really manifest to profits, okay? All right, this is very, very important. I don't want you guys to put me wrongly again outside. <laughs> Okay, so with that understanding here, let's look at the Dow Jones for this morning. All right, now this is the Dow Jones conventional chart, and you can see pretty clearly it's still moving upwards, okay? Now, the only thing that, uh, little little thing that I took note is this morning movement. So what I did is that I take the top of the, a few weeks ago, and I connect with the one last week, uh, two weeks ago, and then this is what I get, okay? So it seems to be for it to really uh, hit a very beautiful triangle, there is still a little bit more upside to go for the Dow Jones. It seems to be a little bit more, okay? So what number is that? That is about for today is 30,290. I repeat, 30,290, all right? Roughly there. Now, once again, do know every broker has different levels, different data. So let's take note of that. Okay, someone is talking. Let me just uh, mute everybody again. Okay, yeah. Okay, done. All right, so... Um, well, any significant, well, my point is this, if you are a technical guy where risk reward ratio plays a part in your life, then definitely you will have to consider if I sell something at a high, where's my stop loss? And if my stop loss, I can accept the stop loss, then where's my potential profit? So if you are selling at a high level, you are just hoping to catch the highest point. Now, this sort of trading method, right, it's not wrong, but it's scary because high can go higher than what? Sell higher? So usually I will prefer the market to hit the top first, Pulls back, give me the feel, give me the range of stop loss range, then I enter the sell. So at the moment now, I'm not that keen to sell yet. All right, because to me, this is entering to my sixth week. All right, I'll explain this right now about the sixth week shortly. Just give me one more moment. Now, this is the um, the 15 minute chart. You can see pretty clearly now the 61 point was reached back then. And slowly, at every 30, every Fibonacci number, the market stabilized that and went high. And I told you before, as long as the Fibonacci stays about 23.6, the market will break the high and it really, really happened, right? So you see, it's all proven. So question is how to draw this new people now. Very simple. You just have to do this. Take the low and then connect with the high. Yes, that's it. That's how simple it is. So now you have the opposite side. You have the opposite side. Is that how, how you draw it? Okay, no, because this is retracement, okay? So what you do is actually like this. Here we go, this is the way. All right, so now it's taking the high and the low and you're telling yourself if, if the market pulls back to 23.6, consider for buying. If not, you break to 38.2, 50, 61.8. Now you realize that from the low point to the high point, 61.8 itself right, is right here. Okay, this is the level that we'll be watching very closely. So the first number to watch is 23.6, and that's about 30,000, um, approximately 30,080 around there, okay? 30080, okay, I'll write it down for you. Uh, here we go, 30080, okay? So that is the first form of support, like, I believe, for Fibonacci at 23.6. Now, of course, different people will draw it differently. Some will draw it over here, some will draw it over here, some will draw it here, up to you guys. As long as it works for you, I'm comfortable with, you're comfortable with that, okay? All right, huh? okay, that is the people. Now go to the six week theory part. Now I'm not too sure, do you remember this? I said before, right? Let me just expand the chart a little bit bigger for you. We go back then and uh, revisit, all right? Remember? Now on this particular week, remember that the Dow Jones came off pretty strongly. Oops, sorry. Now on this particular week, the Dow Jones came down pretty strongly. And I mentioned this to all of you. I said this, look, if the Dow Jones continue to go down, it will go even lower. That is, of course. 
But if the Dow Jones do recover above the midpoint of this candle, the Dow will be going upwards. Now, how many of you remember that? I, re I repeat, uh, if the Dow Jones go past the midpoint of this black candle, the Dow Jones will likely be recovering quite a fair bit. All right, if you remember, QQREM into the group chat. Now, I did ask you before, but I want to just reiterate one more time because just in case, you know, I get it wrong. All right, if you remember this, excellent because prepare your calculator. Yeah, prepare your calculator. It means your handphone. Okay, you turn it to calculator mode now. You stand by with this. Okay, so we do the mathematics, all right, everybody. Okay, uh, follow me. Now, the opening price of this candle is 28. 217. Okay, 28217. Okay, let me write it down for you. Okay, 28217. Okay, the closing price. Okay, hold on. Uh. The closing price is 26527. 26527. Now, I repeat, different brokers have different data. Please, it will vary, all right? Different people, huh? thank you. All right, so now what you do is this. You take 28217 minus 265527. I repeat, take 28217 minus 26527. You get the difference, right? So what's the number? Can anyone tell me? Can you key in the group chat so that we all have the same number? What number do you get? Yes, you get 1690. That is the difference, the whole entire candle uh, range. So now you take this 169, 1690, you plus back to 28217. So the range is 1690. So you take this number, you add back to this number, add. You get a number. What number do you get? Okay. Okay, you get this number 29. Two nine nine zero seven. Correct. Indeed, you get this number. Right. Two nine two nine. All right. Nine zero seven. Exactly. All right. So we're adding this number back into the system. Okay. All right. What does it tells you that the Dow will be going towards two nine nine zero seven as a form of resistance. Okay. So what what can we see from here itself? Let's take a look. The Dow went past thirty thousand. Right. So that means the Dow has already hit that level. It yeah, basically went up one time. So let me just put the number in. 907. Okay, there you see, that is how it works. So the when the Dow Jones recover back above the midpoint, <laughs> someone drawing stuff for me. Okay, thank you. All right, then after that, the Dow Jones went up by one time. And that's why you can see the market had very strong resistance at this 29907 previously. So my point is this, okay, the market has went up one time. All right, so that means that, right, the Dow Jones, we should see some resistance. And I say that this thing will happen within three to six week time. So what happened is that, look at it, this is the first week. This is the second week. This is the third week, fourth week, fifth week. And now we are into our sixth week. So what I'm trying to say is this, right? I believe that this Dow Jones is running its due cost soon. All right. Now, based on candlestick, okay, based on candlestick itself, right? You can see that it's actually doing a bit of triangle. And the body of the candle is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I repeat, the body candle is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So unless there's a very powerful news this weekend or this week itself that will stretch the Dow all the way up again, if not itself, right, I will play the devil advocate to go slow right now. Okay? So you heard me clearly, all right? So I say I've been bullish for the last few weeks and I've been telling you guys, although economically the market is terrible, but the chart shows like different things. So if you look at it one more time, back then, before the big... Big movement come in, huh? watch. Huh? The market basically hit the top the first time here. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, huh? around seven. The one that below is not counted. So that means for seven weeks of upside, touching it, all right, then the market cave in. So we are now only jolly well, only on do our sixth week in a way, or fifth week, like, to be correct. Okay. 
So there's still about one to two weeks more time for the market pattern to repeat. So of course, this is all pattern recognition. Whether it happens or not, that's another thing on its own. But why not be careful on that? Since you know that the put options now is at the lowest level. And usually, after a few weeks of that happening, the market will usually turns around, okay, or come off like in this way, okay? So that is my sharing for this. Now, regarding for my PSV system today, let's take a look at the Dow Jones right now. Now, today's Dow Jones opening price is between the pivot one and pivot two, so much no direction at the moment. As long as it stays above opening price, the market should be heading towards 30,358, okay? Now, if the Dow Jones do go below OP, then there is a small, it's a chance to see 30,059 being traded. And that is the level that I mentioned earlier, the 23.6 level, right, on the Fibonacci. So seemingly, it's possible for the Dow to touch back 30,059 based on Fibo, all right? Now, KSI-wise, it's still green color, means the boys are still buying. It's relentless buying regardless. So every pullback, you can see every time the Dow pullback, the, the market recovers, okay? So that is the very strong sentiment right now. Now, for the NASDAQ this morning, this is my NASDAQ chart, okay? The NASDAQ have broken above my trend line, but because today is still <clears throat> ongoing, I will not remove the trend line yet. But of course, if the market stays above my trend line, then yes, that will be the desk that will go to uh, next level altogether. Now, of course, NASDAQ is at all time high. There's no numbers for you. I mean, I can do Fibonacci extension for you, but honestly, this is just only a guessing game. But uh, running, rising concern itself is that you can see for the RSI, it is now uh, touching the 70 level. It's not there yet. It's 69.15. So I cannot give you the conclusiveness of this, but if the NASDAQ really close up this tonight, then I believe the NASDAQ got 13,000 to go. But if NASDAQ today close down and go below the RSI 70, then traders be careful because this means that the market broke the previous high but failed to continue. This is going to be a watching game, all right? A watching game. So for our own chart wise, let's look at NASDAQ right now. NASDAQ today is also between the pivot one and pivot two. So the upside is 12,586, downside is 12,509. So it's a very tight range on our pivot, very tight range. Now it's not because that um, we are not drawing it properly, it's because you can see the range the last few days is very tight. So when the range is pretty tight itself, right, my pivot will also go along with it. That's why how this pivot is, it's very dynamic. It follows the market. It's not a technical point from the past and we draw and get it done with it. No, it is something more than that itself. So if you like my pivot, right, do consider joining us, okay? Now look at the bottom of the screen. You realize that a few weeks ago, that was the reason why NASDAQ has so many buying because there was a KSI jump right at the bottom. That's why the NASDAQ went up for more than a thousand points from that on point. So at the moment now, it's all right. Some of my friends, you know, even the, uh, I would like to quote her name, but I can't, right? Even the multi-millionaire trader that we have, she also getting a bit of jittery with the NASDAQ itself. All right, you heard me right. And she's, she's also bought noise NASDAQ around here and she made quite good money. And even herself now is not that comfortable with NASDAQ at this current moment. So I give you the hint already, okay? The multi-millionaire traders. All right, so that is the NASDAQ. And of course, let's look at the S&P 500. S&P 500 now, we are showing a very interesting gap up. Now this morning, it was a gap up effect. It broke the previous high, so it has to stay up. All right, 3,700 is a very extreme level. In fact, that is a level that most of the bankers were looking at at 3,700 back then, okay? So traders-wise, I will say that this, as long as the market stay below OP is good, if the market stay below OP, probably it's time to exit from this market, at least for this few days, all right? Now today, S&P 500 is also within the brief 3710 is a resistance, 3672 is the support. Now the KSI is also green in color. So which means that as long as the market stays above OP, the upside is still pretty there. All right, you heard me correctly, the upside is still pretty there. Okay, so that is the equity market. Let's go to the Hang Seng right now. Now I know that guys, you are involved in Hang Seng a fair bit and I told you Hang Seng chart, right? It's pretty interesting, take a look right now. The Hang Seng chart. Eh? Now Hang Seng that day came down pretty strongly. But I mentioned to you guys, as long as Hang Seng stays above the MA30, the Hang Seng will be going up. And indeed, Hang Seng really stays above the MA30 and Hang Seng went up. Now, today, Hang Seng should be going a bit higher. It should be testing the high uh, back here on the 25th of November. I suspect that it will go there and test it, okay? Now, if it tested it and failed to stay above that 27,000, maybe you can pick some profit there. And for short sellers, right, if you're comfortable to do some short selling, you can consider that if you want to talk about risk reward ratio, okay? 27,000, uh, that's my level there, okay? For uh, the Hang Seng. I'll write it down for you, uh, just to make sure that we have the right note. 
Now, of course, this is for conventional trader. For PSV traders, you still have to use the chart like, to give yourself the view of the market. And this is for conventional, okay? All right. Now, anytime you have anything to ask me, you can just key in the group chat and I will come back to you ASAP, all right? Well, 128 people on this morning, MAO. Thank you so much, guys, for your support. Thank you so much. All right, so that is the uh, equity market right now. Let's look at the um, gold. Now, gold has been going up the last few days. You can see very nicely, last five days, gold have been trending upwards, all right? So back then, when gold was trading at 1763, many people panicked and called me up, text me and say, Cal, can you truly cut your losses and stuff like that? I keep on repeating this to you guys. When the market is selling, okay, follow the sell. But if the market is so-called selling, which means you call for sell, but the market is not moving, then it's time to buy. And need itself, the market really start to buy up from that moment onwards. Now, everybody is calling for buy. Why do I say that? Well, I do a research again. I check on the mainstream media or the uh, financial channels. And apparently now everybody is saying that the gold will go higher, aiming at 1875. Then you that the bears are running around now, going covering their ass, all this thing. Now, when I see all this thing, I tell myself, okay, fine. Now, if the market says today is a boo day, the market has to stay up. If it stays up, I will follow through. All right, that's how I do this. That's why every morning I spend about an hour to do my research and get the sentiment feel of what this analysts are saying and are they really following through what they are implying it in the market. So this morning, I look at the gold chart right now. Well, this morning gold, I don't see um, much buying interest yet at this moment. Now, let me just pick up the chart a bit bigger. Now you can see that this is, I don't see much interest here. All right, pretty clearly it's all right. There's some profit taking. Now I'm gonna remove some of the lines there. This all been done. The 1795 has been triggered. All right, all been done and remove it away. 1837 also triggered. Those who follow through, you have made money on that. So now, which means that based on the chart wise, I told you the MA30 will be triggered, right? Remember that? Last Friday, before the goal hit the uh, hit the 18, MA30, I said that goal will go up to about 1840 plus range for it to trigger that particular MA30. Do you remember that? If yes, right, can you key the word gold, G-O-L-D, into the group chat? All right, you remember that? Yes, I'm very happy that some of you remember that and the goal really hit that 1847, the number that I mentioned, Gerald, you're absolutely right. The high was actually about 1848, so at $1 difference. I mean, that's good. And then it pulls back down. All right, it pulls back down. So the question will be, right, today, what should we look out for? Now, today is very simple. I'll give you a number now for free, 1845. Today's resistance is 1845. 1845 on MA30, 1845, not a 40 number, please. <laughs> it's just a number to watch out for, 1845, okay? Sorry for my handwriting because it's using mouse, it's very difficult. So 1845 today is the MA30 resistance. If the goal goes up to 1845, if it stays above it, good. That will signify a very good uptrend on the way. But if you see that some form of resistance at 1845, then take some profit if you're long from here. Okay, now today I won't be long right now because the market is trading below OP. I'll wait for a while. And I did mention to you guys is this, the market was a buy previously right here. And then from this point, the goal has went up by almost $100 already, almost $100. So I think it's jolly well a pretty good run. And I did draw this for you. I did draw this for you previously. I said that if the gold touches MA30, there will be some profit taking. Then there will be the decisiveness. It's either we're going to see an all the way to 1900 or you're going to go down lower. So my point is this from this particular drawing, it tells me that I should go slow with go this few days. All right. I should go slow with go this few days. Okay. So at this moment now, I would not want to double into gold until I see pretty clear signal. All right. For long for conventional chart traders. Now for us PSV trader, it's a different thing altogether. We can actually look at our day chart to give us some hints. Now from the day chart, we can see that pivot one is 1862, pivot two is 1833. And this morning the goal really touched our 1833 and rebounded. That's how powerful is this our PSV system. It knows exactly what to do and the level to watch out for. So now the thing is this on the conventional on, on our PSV chart, you can see this morning. Gold price came down to 1837, 1833, stopped there. KSI is there, blue bars are there. So that's why gold went up again. But of course, gold has to stay firm and continue its upside above the opening price. Now it's below opening price, so I'm not comfortable to buy. 
So today, because it's between pivot one and pivot two, right? So it has to stay above the opening price for buyer to come in. I repeat, the opening price today is 1838. If gold price cannot stay above 1838, right? Then might be selling again below to 1833. All right, so all clear on that. Today, very clear sharing, all right? If the gold stays above OP, then the first target is 1846. Okay, 1846 level, which is already nearby to 1845, the MA30 level. All right, all clear on that. If you're clear, please keep the word clear, C L E A R on the group chat, all right, for gold. All right, thank you guys so much. Okay, now this is the crude oil market, and I mentioned that you crude oil is still on uptrend. I have been saying and repeating myself many times. I say that crude oil is still going to go up because you can see from my trend line and my MA and my MA200 all are pretty bullish. The only thing is this intermittently that will be profit taking well, because why the crude oil is near the top part of the conventional indicators. Now for crude oil this morning, it opens at 46.26 and now it's trading slightly lower with the OP price. So crude oil, as long as below OP, that means there'll be some selling and that will actually have some, uh, what they call, uh, it will cause some, uh, impact to the equity market. And I said this before, as long as the equity market, sorry, as long as crude oil is up, equity market will be up. So you can see the last three days, the crude oil price has been going up, right? That's why equity market also follow through. So you can see whatever fundamentally we learn from the textbook is very different from the real world itself, all right? Textbook says that crude oil is a cost. So when crude oil price goes up, you know, uh, equity revenue will go down. You know, this sort of thing, well, let the chart decide, okay? Follow through the market. So for today, our PSV chart on the crude oil, let me bring it in for you. Right, today also the opening price is between pivot one and pivot two. So again, today the opening price of most of the market is the pivotal point. If the market stays above OP, then you look for buying. If the market stays below OP, then look for selling. Today, crude oil, the range is 47.13 to 45.50. All right, so which means that if the crude oil do come into profit taking mode, there'll be some support at 45.50 and that would help you on the equity market. If the crude oil comes down, equity come down, then you can use this 45.50 as a form of a guide to see whether can you buy back your equity market. Okay, so 45.50 will be the level to watch out for, for crude oil. And um, on one more bit and this is crude oil. Okay, done. Okay, let me show you now the one that uh, I'm going to be having my preview very soon, Bitcoin, right? Now, Bitcoin, as you can see right now, okay, Bitcoin, okay, it is still pretty strong, all right, pretty strong at this moment. So this tells you that Bitcoin, I will say this upfront, Bitcoin has a very strong resistance at 19540, 19540. So if Bitcoin breaches 540, there is a very good chance for Bitcoin to see 19800 again, okay, very easy to see that. Okay, 19800. Of course, Bitcoin went past 20,000. It went past, but my point is this now it's consolidating. So today, Bitcoin is above my pivot one, that is 18940. So that's why today, Bitcoin at the moment now is going upwards. Yes, whatever you learn in PSV, you can apply it on Bitcoin easily. So once you get an indicator, you can use it. And do not Bitcoin, Ethereum, these two, these two cryptocurrency is the one you can use for, and they trade 24 hours. Yes, they trade 24 hours per day, every day, even Saturday and Sunday. And of course, if you use it with my KCX, it'll be very good. This is my KCX, all right? All right, it haven't been relabeled yet because I'm doing my last final testing. But you can see every time when the KCX hit the bottom, the market usually will actually recover. It's like that's so simple. Now, how on, if you do the five minute chart every single day, you can do about three to four trades. I repeat, yes, every day, three to four trades. Now, of course, you, can, you ask me, what's the accuracy like? I'll tell you upfront, it's about 75% to 80%. Yeah, because we have so many trades every day. So there will be some trade you lose money. But if you talk about averages and the losses versus the winning, it is very clear. You can see that, right? The best part of this is that in a way, it will give you way in advance notice. You will have 10 to 15 minutes in advance notice before you can trade. You can see the difference there. Like this particular case is this morning, someone texted me early in the morning, I, I share with this person. I say, look, Bitcoin will be going up soon. And she was asking me, Kel, how long more? I say, wait for the color to turn around. So of course I help her and show her a chart. So she had almost 25 minutes of time. She waited for 25 minutes. But then at this junction here, she entered the buy and almost instantly uh, before she noticed this, the Bitcoin shoot up already. 
So this is the very powerful part when you have the KCX, KSI, all with you. Yes, I have completed the KSI for Bitcoin also. That's why it's going to be very powerful. I mean, uh, what they call instrument for all of us. It will be released very, very soon. Okay, so guys, if you're interested to know more about this, do come on board. It's going to help you way, way, way a lot. All right. So that will be all for this morning session. Okay. So take note itself. This is my uh, sharing. This coming December, 12th of December, sorry, Saturday, 10 a.m. I will do one last preview for this year. Obviously, <laughs> coming end of the year. This is the last chance for you to get it at 1388. All right. From January the 1st, 2021, the price will be revised to 1688. Now, this coming Saturday topic will be how to use the trade with the boy PSV KCX indicator to spot the gold big boys and the crypto whales daily. Yes, daily. All right. So students of mine, you can invite your friends to all join. You really want to be part of this. All right. Because you talk about gold, we talk about crypto. Okay. At the same time. All right. For one and a half hour preview, I think it's very good. To register is all right. This is my registration. You can actually register right now. Student of mine, you also need to register to get the Zoom. All right, you need to register to get the Zoom link. All right, and of course, on that day, it's a, it's a Christmas uh, period. I will give a bit of promotion for this 1388. Yes, a bit of revised price of promotion for that, and that's it. Once we hit 1st of January, there will be no more revision of promotional prices. Okay, guys, so I hope you join in this coming Saturday. And last but not least, this is my point here itself. If you are positive, you will see opportunities instead of obstacle. Now, very people tell me that Cal, it's impossible to do Bitcoin, Ethereum because it's a very tight exchange, a lot of difficulty. I say, no, I can see it's an opportunity, let's try. So I spent three weeks behind the market, watching the market every single day, every single night, testing it and back testing it. And I realized that it really works. So guys, if you really get want to make money on the daily schedule, this is the one really, all right? All right, thank you so much for today. I hope you will make money. Let me just share you the Dow Jones chart once again because there's a request for that. Okay, hold on a minute. Give me, give me a short moment. I bring out the chart once again. This is the Dow Jones chart. You can see that as long as the Dow stays above the opening price, the market will generally be on the upside for today at this moment now. All right, there was some selling earlier, but you can see the bottom screen, the KCI, the KSI is a very strong uh, buy signal at the bottom. Okay. All right, thank you so much. Take care, guys. The uh, thing is already up already on this on the market right, on the uh, uh, this uh, uh, you trade the boys channel. Okay, guys, enjoy yourself. Take care. Bye bye.